Now back in the past I did review a few controllers from GameSir. They've always been pretty good and this is one of their newer models that they sent out to me in exchange for this video. It is called the GameSir X2. Now this one, why I thought it was so interesting is the first thing, it looks very similar to the layout and the design to say a Nintendo Switch Lite. But of course it opens up, you slot your phone into it. Now your phone must have a Type-C port for this particular controller and it's hardwired as well, which is another thing that I was interested in. It's not using Bluetooth and that means we're not gonna have any problems with Bluetooth latency. It's in my time using it, a very good controller, nice, good, compact size to it, good build quality. And even if a game doesn't natively support hardware controllers with the software that I'll show you in this video, you are able to set up and emulate basically the touch controls and use them with hardware. Of course, gaming with a hardware gamepad is just so much better than using touch. So let's take a look at how it is packaged up and what we do get inside our box here. So welcome to GameSir World. There is a little bit of paperwork in here that you'll find just in the middle of this. I will quickly show you, of course. So we have a sticker there. If you wanted that, use a manual. And just another little bit here, just about the application and contacting them and their social media sites and whatnot. So here we have the controller, nice size. So we do need a phone that is smaller than 167 millimeters, the length of it. Now I'm gonna be using and showing you here two phones. This is one of them, which is the K30 Pro Zoom. So as I show you, you've put this in. This is actually flexible, the Type-C cable. So you must have a phone with Type-C. If you do not have Type-C, then you cannot use this controller. See how it moves up like that? So you're able just to get it in there, quite easily do this without too much of a hassle and then extend it out. So it has a spring in here, spring loaded. There are rubber pads in the inside, keeps the phone here in place. And if I just give this a good shake around, that is not going anywhere. And you can see on the back there, there's a little bit of a gap there for the camera bump too that sticks out. So that works out well with the design of all phones having their cameras, well, more or less in that area there. Just remember though, that it cannot be any longer than 167 millimeters. So we've got the triggers up here at the top, you can see, and they've got a really good feel to them. So clicking them in, they're not really that loud or noisy. Now, apparently they're rated for 3 million clicks, these switches they have used. Plastics and the build quality, is very, very good. So we have some rubber pads here, reasonably comfortable. Now, why I do like a lot the look of this particular controller and why I decided to, to review it and agree to it because it's a lot like my Nintendo Switch Lite's controller, the layout too as well. And you'll see here, look at the similarities between the layouts here. Now the controllers are a little bit smaller. There's rubber on the top here and they go back of course with a spring load loaded mechanism to take them back into the middle there. And they have a great feeling to them. So very, very, very similar layout. Now I wish the D-pad here was actually like a normal D-pad. And what I mean by that is, well, at least one that looks like my Nintendo Switch would have been a little bit better there. So we've got various different modes that we can turn on. So right now it's in the normal joystick mode. And if I hold down these two button buttons, which is home and the game sir, you will then switch over to a, another mode, which is basically emulating touch then. So it's gonna go over, it changes the color here, the status LED. Now there is a Type-C port down here on the bottom. You plug this in, it passes through power to the phone, which is great. So you can continue on gaming if your phone starts to lose a bit of battery or it's getting low or something. So you can charge at the same time and keep on gaming. So there's no battery in this. It's not Bluetooth operated. And to me, that's actually a positive. So you don't have to worry about a battery going bad in this in the long run because that can later it can swell up and you need to throw the controller in the rubbish bin. It's never gonna happen with this one, but it just means we cannot, because there's no Bluetooth, just use it individually by itself. No, it's all hardware, but that means the latency is going to be very, very good. So the buttons all have a nice feel to them. Very good and a good build quality to this. And then removing my phone is very easy. I just need to pull on this and then lift the phone out like so. And it is not gonna damage my phone because there is rubber here on the bottom. And this, I'll give you a closer look here is that rubber that is applying a little bit of pressure onto the phone to keep it in place. But it is mostly the type C port here that's slotted into your phone that is doing the work there to make sure my phone's not gonna come loose. And in the time using it, it does not feel like it is going to pop out and suddenly just eject my phone across to the other side of the room. Not at all. It does feel very, very secure, locked into place when using the controller.
And so there is, of course, an application for this. If you wanted to set up and configure the overlays for the on-screen touch controls to then be converted into hardware, if your game that you want to run on this, for example, PUBG, which I will show you shortly, doesn't support controllers. Okay, it's just come up. So you do need to give it permission later on. It will ask for permissions to connect and use USB and then for the overlayers too as well that you get in game. So you need to set all of that up, which I've already done. It's just telling me switching the different modes there too as well. So you can find all of the games in here that they do have listed recommending games. A lot of these do support controllers, but for example, PUBG, there doesn't. And there is their controller configuration. So you're able to set that up through the application and they do have their own store, a help, and play the game too, you can see right here, where you'll find firmware upgrades. So I am on the latest firmware at the time of this video. It was very simple to do. Oops, oh, that's a problem there, I think, with my connection. But I'm on the latest firmware, and that is all set up. So let's take a look at some gameplay using the overlays. So I'll test out and see how their pre-configured on-screen overlays for the touch controls to then convert to the hardware ones. It's going to work with PUBG. So this game doesn't support controllers at all. So I've gone with their profile. So just using and tapping the widget there, you can select and download ones online that people do submit themselves or the one from GameSir, which is the one that I'm using here. So when you go into the config here, you can take a look. Uh, it's just showing me right now well, the top shares, so these are the ones that people submit online. And that's the one I've gone with, just the official layout. And we'll see how that runs here with my K30 Pro Zoom. There's other ones that people have uploaded. I can see for a few Samsung phones and different models there too as well that you could test out or just create and configure your own one if you have the patience for that. So the configuration is pretty standard here. The left stick is our movement and the right is to look around. So moving that up and down, you can see there. And they've got the trigger. So this trigger is to fire or punch. And then we have the left trigger, that one there, is then the sights. So getting around and moving here, it seems to be pretty easy, but things like the jump or move up and things, well, that all has been configured too. So it takes a little while to learn it. So I believe that is, yeah, that's jump right there too, okay? And to toggle the running, I think I do need to use like a shortcut for that. Now let's have a look at just getting through a door. If I can do that, I don't want my teammates, oh no, he's still there. He's not uh, offline or anything like that. So it seems to be pretty good. Okay, so let's have a look at looking down then the scope right here. It's just getting used to the controls here, the sensitivity is gonna take a little bit of time. So very quick then to just look down the scope instead of having to push a button, of course, on the screen, but that's all it is doing. It's just emulating the touch, of course, with those overlays. And now with my Samsung Galaxy Fold 2, it does work out to be perfect here in the GameSir X2. I didn't expect this. I did not expect them to cater for this expensive phone. So I have the loudspeakers at the top here, left and right. They're not blocked with this controller, which is great because our Type-C port is here. The Type-C port with the Redmi uh, K30 Pro Zoom right here is, of course, this side, and the loudspeaker is at the bottom. Just a single loudspeaker on that one, the same as the Poco F2 Pro. So the sound gets a little bit muffled and blocked off, but not with this one. Now, because it's the hardware controls, it's working great with this PlayStation Portable Emulator, which is PPSSPP. Perfect, as you can see. And just so much better than using the touch controls, which, of course, this does support. So I can easily go and select things through just a lot faster than using those touch controls. And I'll just wrap this game up here. Very comfortable, but not quite as comfortable, of course, as say using my Xbox controller. The ergonomics of that one is far superior to this, but it's a nice compact portable size. And probably one of the best Android games, in fact, a cross-platform game here, Genshin Impact, and looks so good on this phone, but of course it doesn't support controllers, which is so unfortunate. But here, using the game Sir X2, so good, the way I can use the controls, and I've got it configured here, and I've just been adjusting the profile. It takes a little while to set up, but it's not actually too difficult to do. And I can quickly swap over characters as well, depending on what but buttons I push there. I've configured it myself. And to do, for example, their magic, very easy to do and it's just so much better playing the game here now with these hardware controls now you don't have to have the overlay standing out over the controls i've just done it for the purposes of this video but through the settings 
I can set it so it is invisible, so you don't see it at all. That's just with the transparency. So you can see once you go into the advanced settings here, general settings, I can set this right down to nothing and just enjoy the game as if it natively supported a controller. Look at this. This is really good. So I'll be using this a lot to play more of this game. Okay, so all up, this is, in my time using it, a great controller. I love the build quality. I love the fact that my phone just slots in. I can use it straight away. There's no Bluetooth connection, so there's no problems with latency. I don't have to wait for a connection. And the Bluetooth, sometimes in some of the controllers or older phones, I've noticed that the Bluetooth can affect sometimes your wireless speeds, lowering them down a little bit, but we don't have that problem here with this controller. Now, for some people that wanted to use it separately, that could be a problem, because maybe you'd want it to also support Bluetooth which it doesn't have. Now the keys, the buttons on them feel very good. All digital, of course, including the triggers at the top. Ergonomics, very similar to, say, a Nintendo Switch Lite. It has that feel to it, which I really do like. And for the gaming that I've done, especially the emulators, and those emulators supporting the native controller support, it has been really good with this particular controller. And of course, I don't have to worry about battery life or the battery life running out on it, because it's just sipping a tiny bit of power, and that is all it needs to run. Now, the other thing is, of course, as I pointed out at the start, you need a phone that is not any taller than 167 millimeters. If you've got a very tall phone, one of those big, maybe gaming ones, I don't think it's gonna fit. My K30 Pro Zoom here, or the Poco F2 Pro, just fits in it, as you can see. And I was surprised to see that my Samsung Galaxy Fold 2 as well fits in this perfectly with the loudspeakers either side. So you do get the loudspeakers on your devices blocked off a little bit, a little bit of muffled sound, but then you could use, of course, Bluetooth for that, and you can't use, unfortunately, 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks in this with your phone. So that is one of the cons of very few with this particular controller. I think it's really great, and I've just had an awesome time using it, especially with emulators on my Samsung Galaxy Fold 2 there. It's just being a really, good experience with this. And I love the design, how small and compact it is. Of course, there are normal Bluetooth controllers you can use, but this one's a lot more portable, only 168 grams, so all up. It does come recommended for me if you're after something like this, it is good. And thank you so much for watching this review of the Game Sir X2.